So get ready for some more reverse engineering of other people's work to try and figure things out. This has to do with the shaft locking bushing that we need for the Ace Aviation Redrive to go on the Briggs & Stratton engine. And I believe for the 1 and 1 8 inch crankshaft, this is the part number we need. And just above it, if you had the 1 inch crankshaft, you would need this one. Uh, so it's this part number over in here. And if you can't read that, the part number for the 1 and 1 8 is T as in Tom, 122102. And for the one inch shaft, it's B as in boy, 122100. Um, both of them have the same outside diameter, okay, which is what's going to go into the Ace Aviation bottom pulley. Um, they have the same overall lengths up here, which would be this. And uh, I believe the first length is this piece we see here. And then the second length we see is this plus this outer ring. Um, so, and I believe what we have here is, is actually two pieces. I don't have any pictures of that, but it looks like this slides into this. I don't know. Uh, six bolts, which is going to match, uh, something I'm going to show you here in a second. Now, a lot of these, uh, cheaper ones I've seen, when we get into the torque specifications of what they can hold before that, I guess they'll sh slip on the shaft. Most of them are like 340, 360. This is 675 and the one inch is 600. So these are heavy duty. And they're a pound, and you don't really save any weight. Uh, it, at most, you might save a quarter pound by going to a lesser unit, but you're going to lose a lot of torque capability. Um, so let's see here. The L1, uh, which doesn't include the bolt head sticking out, the L1 length is 1.26 inches or 1.575 inches. The reason I bring that up is we're trying to reverse engineer this and confirm it's what other people have used. This particular model, B112, B lock B112, power transmission, B lock locking mechanism, okay? So a little over one and a half inches overall, not including the bolt heads, okay? So to help confirm that, we're looking at Les's video here. It's probably going to play and screw me up now, so hold on. i got to get it back exactly where I wanted it. And now I'm going to get another ad. This happened the last time I made the video. <laughs> I don't know why they keep playing ads every time I click there. Skip. All right, so what I want you to see is this is a 3-inch shaft, I'm pretty sure. Okay, not a 4 like I have. So as he inserts this on here, he's got it on the crankshaft and there's still about half that much crankshaft left. So this is about an inch and a half and this is three inches. So pretty sure this is the right locking bushing that I've chosen. Okay. Looks very similar to his. Then he inserts this and he only uh, inserts it so the back of the uh, pulley is flush with the locking mechanism. Okay. So Pretty sure I got the right one. Here we see the bolt heads, and so if it's an inch and a half, and he's got it pushed on there, and I think when I say flush, it's not flush to here, because I think this is machined inward a little bit. If we looked at the back side of this, let's see if we can get a picture of the back side of this pulley. I don't know if he's got one on here or not. No, it looks like it's flush on the back. So let's let him insert it. Now we know he's got it almost flush with the end of the crankshaft and there's still about an inch and a half crankshaft back here. Now he's inserting this. He's making this sort of flush in the back. And uh, so we'd have to guess that even though this looks really wide, I don't know how wide this really is, but it looks like it might be two inches. Okay? Just by guessing. Because we see the bolt head. So it might be, mm, yeah, about two inches probably. Don't really know. That's why I'm not ordering this part till I actually get the drive. Um, but one other thing I wanted to show you. Hold on. Okay, so you need to go get one of these, right? Uh, so one place to get it, if I can find it. Not this place because they want 238 each, and you got to order two. <laughs> uh, eBay has them, 117.30, and they say they have more than 10, and there's minimum quantity one so 11730 
Uh, Amazon had them. They're out of stock temporarily, which could mean forever. Uh, the nice thing about Amazon is you know you can return it if it's not right. Uh, this does look exactly like Les's. We have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts and three threaded holes. This is for uh, when you take it back off the shaft. You have to put the bolts in here and screw it in to pop the thing apart. Um, you can get it from MRO Supply, assuming they have any. But they make you order two. And uh, that's not good. But you can order it directly from Fenner Drives. And they're a little bit higher price, but... I think they're the manufacturer, so I'm pretty much sure they'll have it. So the only other thing to show you is uh, a video. Hold on. Uh, so one thing I want to point out is, uh, and I would have done the same thing if I hadn't seen this video. When Les installs this, he takes the gap in the bushing and lines it up with the keyway. Uh, that way, if it ever spun, he would know it had moved which was a good idea, unless you watch this video, where they tell you to put it exactly 180 degrees the other way to prevent deformation, deformation of the bushing and to ensure it locks better. B-Lock Keyless Bushing Series B106 Installation Instructions. Make sure that locking screw, taper, Shaft and bore contact areas are clean and lightly oiled with a light machine oil and that all collar slits are aligned. Installation Loosen all locking screws by a minimum of four turns and transfer at least three screws into push-off threads in order to keep parts separated during assembly. If installing over a shaft keyway, the keyless bushing should be positioned so that slits in keyless bushing collars that contact the shaft are located approximately opposite the keyway. In addition, a locking screw should be centered directly over the keyway. After inserting keyless bushing into hub bore, relocate locking screws used for separating. Hand tighten locking screws and confirm that collar is parallel and in full contact with face of part to be attached to shaft. So the only thing I want to point out here is this is a B106 and not the B108. Is that what we're looking at? Doo -doo -doo. Let me find it to make sure. Uh, the B112. Uh, in other words, this piece right here is bigger than this piece here on a B106, so it actually pushes in and can't go in any farther. Okay, so it, it has a stop on it. Uh, so some of this uh, instruction doesn't apply. I'll see if I can find the B112. Let me look for it right now. I didn't find another video, so we'll have to go with this one for now. Just remember that on the B106 that they're showing us here, this uh, outer piece right here, just below those uh, bolt heads, is bigger than the actual uh, piece that's the outer piece going in to hold the hub on, the uh, Ace Aviation Redrive bottom pulley hub. In other words, you can't stick this all the way through like Les can because his doesn't have that head on it. But I think the instructions are probably the same. Set a torque wrench to approximately 5% higher than the specified installation torque. Using only 90 degree quarter turns, tighten the locking screws in either a clockwise or counterclockwise sequence. Continue tightening until the torque wrench clicks on each screw before a quarter turn can be achieved. Continue to apply 5% over torque for one or two more passes. Reset the torque wrench to the specified torque and check all locking screws. No screw should turn at this point. If a screw moves, repeat the over torque process. Removal. Check to ensure the axial movement of clamp collars and your components are not restricted. 
Likewise, ensure that push-off threads are in good condition. Relax all locking screws by approximately 4 complete turns Transfer screws to all push-off threads located in flange of collar. Release the assembly by progressively tightening the push-off screws using quarter turns. If you have any questions, just call us at... Yeah, just call them. Uh, so anyhow, um, let me find Les's video here again. So you really need to watch, uh, or, or well, it's Les, but it's on Leonard's page. You really need to watch this video because he does uh, explain, you know, you got to line these two up before you ever tighten this thing down. Um, and again, that one we just watched a video on, it has a head on it, which would prevent you from pushing this uh, um, locking bushing in farther than this right here the outer the outer front of this which you don't want i don't think you want what he has here because we already see that this is a little bit smaller length than the hub itself okay and the first thing you got to do is get these two lined up with each other then you got to look at your crankshaft and you'll want this thing to be centered inside of here it's not as long as this Okay, it's two and a half inches or whatever, and this might be three. So you want this to sit in the center of this. You want the shaft lock bushing to be in the center of the hub, so it's not way back on the back or way, you know, up in the front. So if you use that B106 we just saw that had that head on it, you'd be limited to just shoving it in the front, and that's where it's going to go, and it's going to support the first 75% uh, of the hub, and then the last 25%'s just got open air in it. Okay, instead you can kind of put it in the middle so that's why another reason to use the b112 i think uh, aside from the fact that they can hold a lot more torque than the b106 can um so really um it's leonard's channel but it's less video <laughs> okay everything else he has is exactly right the only thing i found was where he said to put the gap in the uh lock bushing um with the keyway it should be 180 degrees the other way okay so, anyhow, that's uh, the unconfirmed correct part number for these AC Aviation redrives. Um, what we don't know is I don't know the inside diameter of this pulley, and it has to match the outside diameter of this uh, shaft lock bushing. And that is 2.165 inches on either the one or one and an eighth inch crankshaft so uh, the assumption is that it has to be confirmed is that the inside diameter of the ace aviation redrive bottom pulley is 2.165 inches if it's something else then this bushing is not going to work so i don't have that confirmed yet <laughs>